Mini PCs used to be cute. This one is just rude. It's got no right to have all these features packed into it, but it is bigger, so I guess that makes sense. Core Ultra 9, 285H. Yeah, that's the latest Intel APU. Up to 128 gigs of RAM, and you can carve out about half of that to run local AI. LLMs, image generation, things like that. Tons of ports, USB-A, USB-C, HDMI, display port, plus a fingerprint reader. It's got internal speakers and a 360 degree microphone array. But <laughs> all that aside, three features make my head spin. First of all, it's got an internal power supply. Now you tell me, would you rather be carrying around this or just this? Yeah, it is bigger, but huh? Second, a 10 gigabit ethernet port. Oh, did I say one? I meant two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, two. So you can team them for 20 gig aggregate if your switch supports it. That'd be good for some home labbers, but I'll let Jeff Gearling dig into that one. And third, <laughs> it's got a full PCIe Gen 5 slot, so you can run a full desktop GPU, but not like this, like this, huh? It's a special dock called the EX and it provides the power necessary to drive a full discrete desktop GPU and the PCIe Gen 5 slot, and it holds everything together. We'll get into that. I'll run some LLM workflows, of course, on it, but for now, let's kick things off with a few developer-related tasks. All right, kicking these off, here we are on the desktop. So far, I gotta say, this is not the most low powered machine I've ever seen. In fact, it's using about 45 watts of power while idling. That is quite high, I gotta say, but it's also set to high power mode right now. Still, that's a little on the high side. The single core and multi-core scores are decent. They're not the highest things I've seen. That single core score is a little bit on the lower side, but 15,000 is pretty good for this machine. Machine, considering we've got 16 cores here. And here's the GPU, the iGPU. This is the Intel Arc 140T. It says 32 gigabytes there, but we're getting actually 36, a little more than half. It's about 57% allocation for these APUs from the total of 64. So if I did upgrade the RAM in this to 128, so about 70, 73 gigabytes allocated to the GPU, which would allow me to run pretty decently sized LLMs on it. Let's do speedometer 3.1 here. This is a JavaScript based test and it shows us how that single core performance translates to web development tasks. This is going pretty decently fast. 38.5 is a nice score. The highest I've seen was from the Apple M4 series chips. That hits close to 50, sometimes a little bit over 50, but here we got 38, which puts us pretty much in the middle on the higher range of mini PCs though. I'm switching over to the Mandelbrot test in Python. So here we're dealing with an interpreted piece of code that uses up all the cores. And this code base is available on benchmarks games. I'm gonna give it the parameter of 16,000 and let's go. While that's running, take a look at those cores. Oh yeah, this is definitely using them. Look how slow it is to switch between tabs here. That's a little weird. We used 14 out of the 16, but uh, it's supposed to use all of them. Not sure why, but here is our result. Total seconds, 31. Now I don't change this test or set any kind of different parameters between the different machines that I test. That way I can be consistent with this particular piece of code. And if you go out and run this on your own machine, you can compare it to what I have. Even though this is not using all 16 cores right now, that's what this particular bit of code uses. And that's what we're gonna go with. So 31 is not bad, mid-range I'd say. Years ago, I worked in a SOC or security operations center, staring at dashboards at 2 a.m. and wishing there was a safe sandbox to actually practice attacks and defenses. If Try Hack Me existed back then, I would have leveled up way faster. This is Try Hack Me, the world's largest hands-on cybersecurity training platform. It runs right in your browser. There's no setup, no installs, click and you're in real labs. Let me show you a beginner-friendly challenge. In this 
security offensive room, you get a fake bank web app. In the virtual machine, I'll open up the terminal and run this GoBuster command. GoBuster brute forces a website using a word list to discover hidden pages. The output shows slash images and, more interesting, the bank transfers page. As an ethical hacker, with permission of course, you'd validate and report it so it gets fixed. I'm gonna stop short of showing you the full exploit. You can pick it up right here from inside Try Hack Me and see what happens when you attempt that transfer. Why do I feel like this is for devs and beginners? Well, it's browser based and it's hands on with guided learning paths from zero to advanced. Labs based on real attacks and defenses, progress tracking and leaderboards, and Echo, their AI tutor, if you get stuck. Jump in with the link below and start with the offensive security room. Many of the rooms are free and for full access, use my code Alex25 for 25% off the annual plan. So far for the interpreted test and the JavaScript test, we had single core and multi-core. Let's go to a compile test now. And I'm gonna build a .NET application that's quite large. It's 100,000 namespaces and 100,000 classes that are all compiled. So a slightly different scenario here, but it does take a while to build that. And I aptly call this large project. Boom, let's go. While it's compiling, we're about 70 watts and we're using a lot of the cores here. Uh, that one is very lazy. I, I don't know about that guy. He should be fired. Second job he missed. Anyway, we're at 94 seconds for this build. And compared to some of the other machines that I built this on, it's not the best. While that thing's busy compiling, we're bouncing between 70 and 80 watts of power used. Not that huge. I ran this one more time. We got 88 seconds, 88.8. .8, so it's not that much faster. Here it is compared to some of the other mini PCs that I've recently tested on the channel. If you missed that video from a few months ago, I've set up a bunch of mini PCs in different price categories and ran a blast of tests against them. Let's switch gears for a minute to this camera. Just kidding. <laughs> We're going to switch gears to LLMs. Um, Alex likes to be weird sometimes, okay? I want to kick things off with something small just to get the hang of it. We're going to go with this Quen 3 4B non-thinking model, which is relatively new. And when I switch it on, you'll see the GPU offload. 36 out of 36 is allowed to be offloaded to the GPU from the CPU. Does that really matter though? Since it's the same memory in there. Well, yeah, it does because the GPU has its own processing and we're going to see that right now. So actually, I'm going to send 0 out of 36 to the GPU to kind of get a baseline here. Design a scalable web application architecture for an e-commerce platform. This is a good prompt because it goes into quite a lot of detail, which gives us enough to work with. Not so much for prompt processing part because it's still not huge, but it gives us a lot to work for the output. So I can pretty much stop this at any point now to get a sense of how fast it's going. And this is on the CPU, by the way. You look, it's, it's not slow by any means. You can see the CPU being processed right here. Nothing happening on the GPU there. And on the memory side, we're using 14 or 15 gigs out of the 48 available. Let's stop this and see what we get. 14.4 tokens per second there. I'm going to eject that model and I'm going to, you don't need to actually eject it. You can just change the settings on the fly now in LM Studio. And now let's try 36 out of 36 offloaded to the GPU to see if that's any faster with a new chat and go. What do you think? Before I stop it, is this looking faster to you? It looks about the same to me, but look, this is mostly happening on the GPU. 97% utilization, 5.2 out of 36 gigabytes on the GPU. I think it's a little bit faster. 23 tokens per second. So even though memory is the same, the bandwidth of the memory is the same, and that matters a lot. You can see that in some of my other videos. Here, the GPU processing is actually helping out quite a bit. And I do have a couple of larger models. They're not gonna fit in here though. So for example, Llama 70B Instruct, which is 40 gigabytes on disk. If I try to select that, you'll see that LM Studio recommends we offload 51 out of 80 layers to the GPU, which means the rest are gonna run on the CPU. This is not gonna give us full performance, but let's see if this loads at all. Because if it does, that's pretty cool already. And I only have 64 gigs of memory in this machine. Well, it certainly tried really hard. Look at that. It tried twice, but eventually we got there. Let's try running this prompt here. This is what's called a dense model. So all the parameters, all the 70 billion parameters are activated and it's not fast because they're all active. Now a sparse model, 
the opposite of dense, is something like a mixture of experts model, like the OpenAI's GPT OSS 20 billion or 120 billion models. Those are sparse models. So they're gonna be loading a lot less active parameters, even though it's a 120 billion parameter model, it's gonna load maybe a fifth of that, maybe even less. So it should be a lot faster if it loads at all, because that's quite large. Now here is the 70 billion parameter model. It's actually running on this, which is just crazy. But look at that. It's happening partially on the GPU. 28 gigabytes is running on the GPU. So that's helping it out. But it's also running on the CPU. So that's slowing it down. And if I stop this to get the tokens per second, we're at 1.52 tokens per second. Not an acceptable range, in my opinion. What happens if we take this OpenAI GPT OSS 20 billion, which is 11 gigabytes on disk? LM Studio is suggesting we can offload all 24 layers. Let's load that up and see what happens. It's getting stuck and it's not loading the model. There's an error. And I found that a lot of machines are actually picky, whether it's AMD based or Intel based, they are not loading this model into the iGPU very easily. I even have my guardrails set to off. These are guardrails that uh, basically prevent your system from being unresponsive if you're loading too large a model. LM Studio does have the GPU turned on with Vulkan as the uh, backend API, and it's just not loading. But let's try it on the CPU and see if that loads at all. Oh, thanks, helicopter. That's good timing. Amazing. Running the prompt. It is a thinking model, so it's gonna do a little bit of that first. And while it's thinking, we should see some activity. And we do see a lot of activity on the CPU. Thought for 40 seconds, now it's spitting out the information. And by the way, uh, I'm not <laughs> trying to verify the quality of the output. This is just a speed test. The quality of the output is beside this video. It's for a different topic and outside of the scope. We're getting 17.63 tokens per second here. Is that acceptable to you? What if I try to load the 120 billion parameter model and I do it on the CPU? Now, some of these tests I'm doing for the first time right now. I go on these tangents once in a while to see what we can discover together here. And maybe we'll find a surprise because this model usually does not work unless you have a lot of VRAM available. Let's see what's happening on that memory. You can see that. <laughs> that uh, hill going up what a computer has to go through when it's loading a model going uphill if it falls off that model is not loading we're at 63.6 gigabytes usage on this machine out of the 64 available and unfortunately this is what happens good demonstration by the way my computer has ceased functioning i'm still seeing the output on the screen but nothing is working it's not responding and the animation is not moving at all because I had my guardrail set to off. We've now exceeded the memory. The computer is pretty much dead. I have to reboot it. Now I did try to upgrade the RAM to 96 gigabytes, but unfortunately this is one of the downsides of this computer is while you can upgrade it to 128 gigs, please dust regularly. What? I'm not going in here to dust this thing. Are you kidding me? It's very difficult to get to that RAM. You're gonna need to take some of the computer apart to get to it, but it's upgradable. Another downside I wanna mention real quick is while it does have two USB-C ports, only one port is USB 4 at 40 gigabit per second. These days, I think we need a little bit more ports. Am I asking too much? I mean, this thing already has a crazy amount of power in it and ports. Just want more ports, that's all. Let's see what this dock, which is the official B-Link dock, I think it goes for 150 to 170 bucks. Totally worth it. You might think, oh, I'm just gonna, just gonna do that. Well, that's not gonna work. You can't just add that because the actual PCIe slot is too deep inside here to actually reach the card. So we need to use this dock. This goes right on there. There's a few brackets to hold things in place, but I'm gonna skip those right now. And now you have a lot of flexibility with what you can use. Unfortunately, this only has two 8-pin connectors. A card like this, which is the RTX 5060, will work. But a 5090, which requires 600 watts of power, will not work. That one will need a lot more power, and this won't provide it. The 5090 takes a 12-volt connector like this, and it requires four of these 8-pin cables to be able to do that. We're gonna stick with just one here. You have to power on the dock first with the video card and then the computer. Driver installation is as usual. I'm picking up the NVIDIA Studio driver here for the RTX 5060 Ti. And in case you're curious, here's the power draw. 
or about 60 watts for the computer and 20 watts just for the dock that's sitting there with the 5060 on it. 5060 detected. We got 16 gigabytes of VRAM on there. Let's load our little favorite model, Quen 34B. And it says I can offload 36 out of 36 layers to the GPU. Let's load that up. Let's take a peek at the hardware here. And yeah, LM Studio is detecting NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 Ti under CUDA. So we're not using Vulkan anymore. This is now CUDA. It's been loaded up right here into GPU memory, 3.5 gigabytes out of 16, because the 5060 Ti only has 16 gigs of RAM. So we'll be limited by that. 3.5 is enough. I'm going to run our prompt again. And <laughs> yeah, you can see there is a little bit of a difference in the speed. <laughs> I mean, this thing is going crazy. We're using 93% of the GPU. The GPU is being used right there, clearly, and the memory is staying stable. We're going really fast here. And just in case you're curious, suddenly we now have 181 watts being used by this contraption right here. That's the dock and the GPU together, not just the GPU. And we're up to about 75 watts on the computer itself. 100 tokens per second. That is a big difference right there. I'm gonna try OpenAI's GPT OSS, and LM Studio is recommending we offload only 21 out of 24, but I'm gonna try and push 24 layers into there. Yeah, look at that GPU memory going up. And it loaded. This is small context, by the way. We don't have a lot of room there. So I'm gonna run this and see if it loads. And it is, it's thinking. I even hear a little bit of coil wine going on here. And there it goes, wow. 20 billion parameter model running very smoothly on the 16 gigabyte VRAM GPU. I'm gonna stop it. 100 tokens per second here too. Very nice. So quite a bit of an improvement. And all I have here is a mini PC and a graphics card and the dock. Let's try something else. Remember this Llama 3.370 billion? This is a dense model. I'm gonna take the defaults that LM Studio is suggesting and offload 22 layers to the GPU. The rest is gonna to go to the CPU. I wish there was a way to split it up a little bit more. Like I want some layers to go to the iGPU and then the rest to the CPU. Unfortunately, LM Studio doesn't offer that level of granularity. I wish it did though. And it loaded. I'm already amazed. I can't believe this. <laughs> Let's go. Is this gonna be faster? Remember, it was about one something tokens per second. Yeah, it's not super usable. It's going pretty slow. Let's stop this, alleviate its pain. 1.8 tokens per second. We're not getting much help there. One more. That's the 120 billion parameter model. Let's see if we get any help here. I'm gonna try and offload 36 layers. Nope, not letting me do it. It's saying six is recommended. Let's do 20. Nope. Even though our iGPU has enough memory to hold that model together with this GPU, it's not letting us do it. Overall, in my opinion, this machine right here represents a next step in the evolution of mini PCs. And for the price, I think it's worth it, especially considering other machines that are 128 gigabyte capable right now that also have an APU in them. Those are closer to the $2,000 range. But if you are in the market for mini PCs and you wanna see a different price range and how they perform, watch this video over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.